Have you actually used AI in your design workflow? So I just sent over 21,000 emails asking just that. And get this, nearly half the people said they've never even touched AI and a quarter admitted that they don't really know what it can do for them. And only about a quarter are using it right now for rendering and ideation. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I personally use AI as a designer, illustrator, and a dad. And trust me, it is a game changer. Now just sit back, enjoy this quick training on how I use AI to unlock stunning renderings in minutes, generating assets that used to take hours and animating renderings that's storming social media right now. This is the mid journey interface. And this is the web version of mid journey. You might have heard mid journey is also available on discord. This is now what I am recommending to you because the Discord version just have so many technical hurdles. So the web version is not free. It's $8 a month. What I'm gonna do here is actually this interface will allow you to upload a sketch. So I'm gonna use this sketch that you've seen earlier and, and I'm going to ask Midjourney to take this black and white version of the sketch and generate a, a pencil or a color version of this in the traditional drawing style. I'm not asking it to spit me out a photorealistic rendering. I wanna be able to use this to generate something that I can show the clients without doing the coloring myself. What I would do here is this is the prompt control and Midjourney is really sensitive to how you you prompt it and it's not as hard as you think as long as you are using the right format the order of things so i'm going to show you how i prompt it for this particular image and i actually don't know what this is going to look like because every time you rerun it doesn't give you a same image every time so what i'll do here maybe is in, in this first attempt i'll just start typing architectural drawing because this is important you're you're telling it what format do you want this image to come out. Do you want it to be a drawing? Do you want it to be a photo? So I want it to be a drawing of a mid century home, let's say with open floor plan, brick columns, large window looking distant California Bay. Let's say, give me a color pencil in Al Forrester style. Al Forrester is a famous watercolorist illustrator who is not here today, but I love to look at his drawings for inspiration. And lastly, I'm gonna say on white paper. Okay, so these are going to be my prompt. And here, this controls the stylization. So how much you want the image to be stylized. So right now I'm gonna pull it all down to zero and I'll show you one of the controls that's most impactful. So I'm going to click on the retexture tab of this before I hit the generate button. So I'm going to hit generate and this is going to spit out four variation of uh, the drawing. And let's all take a look at it together. And it's fairly quick how this will spit out an image. Okay, so this is what it gave me, right? Is you're probably thinking, Henry, this is, this is not close to what I am looking for. It looks a little bit more like a kid's drawing than something that I can actually use. Or you might think, Henry, this is exactly what I'm looking for. I can see the color version of this. I can totally give this to a client and they will be amazed by what I came up with. So the controls that I wanna play around here is this stylization. And this stylization is really a specific thing to mid journey. So stylization influences how strongly the mid journey aesthetic is applied. Low stylization value produces an image that closely match to the drawing itself, like the drawing I have right now, but it's less artistic, right? So the high stylization means it's more artistic the way that you want to give Mid Journey and have it do its thing. So I'm going to increase the stylization from zero to 300. I'm just gonna type it in here. I'm gonna see what a 300 value will give me. So I'm going to click on enter here. Usually this takes about 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Oh, look at that. That looks way better than what I could have hoped for. So you can see this is really mid journey taking it to the next level where it's trying to make it a little bit more artistic. Okay. So this is stylization at 300. We can go all the way up to like a thousand. Let's rerun this at 1000. So 1000 may be actually a little bit too much for most people. So this is at 1000. It's definitely more artistic, right? And not realistic, but artistic than the 300 compared to nothing. Let's say you kind of like the three to 1000. Maybe it's not quite 
1,000, maybe it's just 500. Okay, but we're going to just revise this prompt a little bit because I think I can add in a little bit more detail to this prompt. And just generally speaking, the more specific you can ask Midjourney, the more it is going to be reflected in the output. So I'll add brick columns and let's say we want wooden beams. We want wood floor and give me wood ceiling and the wood beam in the view. Did I say wood ceiling here? Okay, let's go ahead and ask it to be prompt. So here we're gonna get another set of image that should reflect the prompt improvement. We're at 62%, 93%. Okay, you can see how this new set of images, they do have wood ceiling, they do have wood beam, they do have the wood floor. So now this is looking really, really good. So I wanted just to show you what this is capable of. There's so much to this you can you can select for example you can select part of the drawing and then you can tell it to add something in place of this so if you want to add skylights that would be something that i would want to experiment with but as you can see this is already a really good place if you had a black and white image to to start you can ideate within 10 minutes i can spit out 20 or 30 of these as a way to help you think through things these are not things that you might want to show to your client so I want to show you another application of this. Let's say you're a landscape designer. You want to kind of generate a bunch of stencils or for, for your floor plan. I might ask here in the create option. So you can see I've experimented with this a little bit. Here, I might actually ask in the prompt, let's say drawing of 50 native California plants and shrubs. Want a top down plan view with shadow in watercolor style for landscape design on white background so that maybe you can cut this out and put it into portfolio or procreate and then in here what i would do is bring in a existing drawing which you have actually let me just this is the drawing i'm going to upload in here i'm going to upload this drawing as an image prompt. So you can use this image as sort of its own reference to, to prompt it. So I'm gonna upload it as an image prompt. And then let's see, I'm going to stylize it maybe at 200. And let's see what it comes out with. So the more stylization that you put into it, it could look, look a little weird or it could look too real. It may not be what you're looking for. So it is important to play with that stylization. So in here, what I'm going to get are these images. So I think it's a good starting point. You might like some of them. Actually, this one is not too, too bad. And oh, actually, this one's pretty good. And there's a lot of controls on the right side where you can play with, let's say you want to rerun this, you can rerun the same prompt with a little bit more parameters that are building here. So to generate like people, plants, I'm not sure about FF and E, this is the kind of prompts that can give you a whole library of things that if you want to build from scratch, this, these are the things that I think can save you just so much time if this is part of your workflow. So for a while, I've been a big fan of Tim Fu's work and you can see on his Instagram page, he has these beautiful visuals. What used to be like a still image that he was able to turn into videos. And I just didn't know what software or what AI input that he was using. And now with the latest version of Mid Journey, you can do this for as cheap as $10 a month. You can get very close visuals exactly like this. And it's really easy and simple to do. So I'm gonna show you a couple more of my personal examples because I've been playing with this for the past week or so. So these are some of my work that I've been experimenting with. And this is probably a drawing that I would do. And you can see Midjourney is taking a still image like this and turning it into a video. And it's not just a video, it's actually showing a lot of the space that weren't part of the original drawing. This used to be a still sectional drawing and I've asked to animate the people walking through. You actually notice right here, the people that came out of the space actually walk straight through a window. So it's not perfect, but out of the many versions of this, you might actually get one that actually works. This is a side drawing of a shaker village. 
with cars on the road, whereas before there was no cars. He actually put smokes on top of the houses, which I thought was really funny. This is the same project of just like a more zoomed in view of the people walking into the inner part of the building. And it handles the 2D techno drawings really well. So you can see in this drawing, it's showing more of the building. So this is zooming into the section a little bit more and with people animated through the section. I even animated my graduate project, which showed more of this atrium space and the people in it. And this was the still image behind this video. This is another mid journey output with cars going through the streets, more of a retro style rendering. This one I thought was pretty funny because they have this gigantic husky just coming out at you. But there is a version where the dogs are much more reduced and actually is more realistic. It handles technical drawings really well. Like for example, in the sectional drawing, you can see the people going through it. So imagine these kind of things can make your presentation a lot more dynamic if it's a PowerPoint, if you're showing things on Zoom. And even here, this is a 2D drawing and it was able to transcribe the other side of the building really realistically. The same thing with this, you can see the building is turning around and it's still very much believable. If you're a landscape designer, you can see this is a children's playground with kids animated in the scene. And this is the before image from Mid Journey as a still image. So my goal was I wanted to see if it handles like drawings very well, but it actually handles realistic stuff even more. So again, this is another Mid Journey output and the initial image show the blurred people moving through the space of what looks like a museum. And the video looks like this, just incredible. Another example of an interior inspiration. And this was the original mid journey inspiration. So now you have a sense of what is possible. I just want to show you some of the simple tools to get there yourself. And it is so much easier than you think. So like creating any images, I'm going to go into my create tab right here. So in this prompt area, you use your create tab. And now this create tab actually has this extra feature called starting frame. So anytime that you want to, let's say experiment with a still image and make it into a video, you want to first upload one of these images that you have in here. You can either choose to upload it from your desktop or you can use one of the existing image as a source. Okay. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to bring this image right into here and you don't actually even need to prompt this at all. So let's go ahead and see what this does without prompting. So I'm just dragging this image in here. You'll notice that there's really at this point, there's not a lot of settings that you need to be concerned with. They will have a lot more control with what you can do with the camera sizes and things like that for the video. But for now, you can just simply enter and we'll see what mid journey will give us. So this will take a lot longer than generating a single image, but you will actually get four video outputs. So you can see it's starting right now and it is using a lot more credits or power, right? So mid journey is going to cost you a time as much as generating a single image. So if you are on a lighter plan, this lighter plan will give you about 200 images per month. This will give you about 25 videos that you can play with. If you're going to be doing this a lot, I will actually look into the standard or the pro plan, or you can even just buy more hours if you need to, like I've done in the past. Okay, so we're done right here. That took about a minute or so. So you can see by clicking through this, even without proper prompting, Mid Journey is zooming in and showing you what I think is a good video. So this is version number one. This is version number two. This one is slightly slower with the cyclist going through the scene. And this one, the camera is a little bit to the right. There is actually a shortcut to preview all these at once. And that's holding the command key on the Mac you can actually see that you're scrubbing through the frame and all four options are synchronized. So this is if you don't want to go into any one of them to see how the videos are different, this is a quick way to preview. That's really how easy this is to generate an image. I do want to point out just the size and resolution while we're at it. So the image in here, if we save it to our desktop, it is not a 
high, high resolution video. Even though this video is saved 1672 by 1080, the resolution of this video, as you'll see if I open this up, this is more like 640p, which is generally enough if you're using it for social media or if you are putting this as part of your client presentation, if you're presenting on Zoom, if it's part of a PowerPoint, I think this is going to be more than enough to see it on screen. And very likely in the next variation of mid journey, you will have more options to upsize and upscale, but that's probably going to cost even more. As you notice here, each video right now is capped at five seconds. So if you want a longer video, you have to actually extend the video and there is option to extend the video. And there's a couple of parameters down here. My recommendation is to extend manually as opposed to just using the mid journey automatic option to do that. If I were to do it with low motion, which basically will mean the video is progressing slower. And I can say in here, car is driving off into the distance. And let's run this again. And let's see what major journey gives us. Okay, so this video is extended. You can see there are four more videos and these videos are gonna be longer than the first one. If we take a look at this first one, you can see the progress bar and it will show when the second video starts. So it is continuous and you can see that in this version, the car did move as we asked it to, but you also notice that in another iteration of this, the car might stay the same place. So it's not going to work every single time. And it really takes multiple tries to get to the version that you want. So be patient with this current capacity and ability. And in the future, I think there's going to be more finer controls in how you prompt and the ways that you can control a camera angle and etc. And just one more thing I want to show you, if you want to try this yourself and you don't have any assets to poke around with or to use, what I would say is just search for architecture, interior design, and then just use any of these images as the basis for you to animate something. So for example, if I click on this sectional drawing and use the image and from the image prompt, I'm going to move this over to starting frame and I'm going to tell it to animate the people on the stairs then I'm going to click on enter and let's go ahead and wait for this to complete. So that took about less than two minutes to finish through. So they're all roughly the same. The camera is all panning from left to right, but you can certainly try more things from here, either by extending the video or asking the prompts to slightly rotate the image. These are all the things you can do in the future. So hopefully this got you excited and I've only shown you three things you can do here. There's at least five more in the bootcamp that you can pick up right now. So if you are interested in taking the next step, my three day bootcamp is on sale right now and you can find more details about it in the link below.